Welcome to your Evo content trial. I'm going to go over a couple quick items here to get you up and running quickly in your trial. First off, we're going to log into the site as the host user. And to log in, I'm going to click log in. I'm going to log in here as the host user. Now once I log in as the host user, you see this black bar that spans the width of the page here. This is called the control panel and you notice as I scroll up and down the page that the control panel sticks to the top of the screen so it's always there for us conveniently if we need to make an edit to the page or update a specific site configuration. Now the first thing I want to go over is how to add a new user. To add a new user, I simply hover over the users menu and click add new user and we get a pop-up screen. The pop-up screen is going to be a very common experience as we edit content in our site as well as if we make any configurations or updates to the site. Now I want to add a username. I'm going to add the username of Clint, display name of Clint, and email of Clint at me.com. Now if I want the user to be authorized here, I leave this box checked and if I have notified checked then that means the user will be sent an email. I'm going to uncheck that now. And we can also opt for a random password or we can give a specific password. So I'm going to type in a password here and you notice as I start typing we get a strength indicator here for our password. Now I want to confirm the password and I'll click add new user. Now the new user has been added to the system and we can see the, the user here in the user accounts page. Now the page that we ended up on is a page where we manage our users. It's the same page as if we hovered over the users menu and clicked manage users. This is where we would end up. Now our users can belong to different security roles within the system. And if we hover over this little shield icon we can see the manage roles. What I want to show you now is how to create a new security role in the system. To create a new security role I'm going to hover over users and click manage roles. And now we end up on a page that shows all the security roles within the system. Now some of these security roles are in the system by default, such as unverified users, translators, subscribers, registered users, and then some of these security roles I've previously created for this demo. Now we would organize our users by security roles in order to be able to give them capabilities to edit specific pages or modules on the pages within our site or even just giving them the capability to see specific pages. So what I want to do is add a new role and to add a new role I'm going to click this add new role and here again we get the pop-up window and I'm going to call this role name the awesome cycles demo role and really that's all we need to do in order to create a role so I'm going to click update and now you can see that we've had enough roles in the system that we get a scroll bar. But you can also see the Awesome Cycles demo role that I just created. Now that we've created the demo role, we can click the Manage Users icon and we'll be able to add users to this role. So I can select the user Clint that I just created. And if I wanted to, I could give the user a start date and an end date for being in this role and all I would need to do is click add user to role but first I want to uncheck this send notification if you leave this check the user will simply get an email saying that they have been added to a new security role so I'm going to add the user to the role and now you can see that the user Clint is the only user in this security role so I'm going to close this screen now if we were to venture back to the manage user screen and look at the user Clint again. If we click on this Manage Roles Shield icon, now we can see the security roles that the user Clint belongs to. So we just added him to the Awesome Cycles demo role. So I'm going to close this window, and the next thing I want to do is show you how to add a new page. So I click back to the home page here just to get us back to a starting point. And in order to add a page, I want to hover over the Pages menu and click Add New Page. Now here again we get a pop-up window, so I'm going to create a page called Locations. Now we have a lot more information that we could include here, such as the page title, a specific URL, description, keywords, and we're not really going to fill all that in right now, but we definitely could. We also want to tell the system where we want the page to live. So I've got this after radio box here selected, and I've got the page of home selected. So 
If you look at the menu, we've got this home page and about us. I'm instructing the system to create this page right in between these two items. Also, I've got include in menu checkbox checked. Now, before I add the page, I just want to click to the permissions. And here we see the permissions grid in the system. On the left hand side, we see the security roles that we previously saw. And the Awesome Cycles demo role is now present. All I want to do here is to allow all users to view this page. So I'm just going to check this box. But you see that as we move across the permissions grid that we could give any of these security roles or a specific user different capabilities such as the capability to view the page, to add pages, to add content, copy, delete, all the way up to full control of the page. So I've configured my permissions. I've given the page a title. I've told the system where I want the page to live and I've also indicated that I want it to be included in the menu. Now I'm going to click add page. And now you can see that our new page is created for us. You can see that the menu has dynamically updated for us. We've also got a human friendly URL that's been created and we've been placed into edit mode. There are a couple of visual indicators that we're in edit mode. The edit page option here has turned blue and we're seeing the black icons hanging off the modules on the page. These are the module action menus. And by default, anytime you create a page, there's one HTML module placed on the page for you. And that's what this inner title module is. This is a HTML module that we can quickly get into and start editing content. And we can update the title of the module by accessing the module settings we can come into the module settings tab and update the title so I'm gonna call this locations and here again we see the permissions tab and we see the permissions grid just remind you that this is the permissions at the module level and so having the permissions at the page level as well as the module level gives you very granular permissions capabilities now these permissions are more specific to modules and by default the modules are inheriting view permissions from the page which is fine in this case. So the permissions are configured. I've updated the title and I'm going to click update. Now in order to update the content here, I'm going to hover over the pencil icon and just click edit content. And we've got a WYSIWYG editor here, which stands for what you see is what you get. And it's just a Microsoft Word like experience to make managing content easy for our content managers. We've got the functionality that you would imagine, such as bold, italics, and underline. We've got a lot of advanced functionality, which we're not going to get into in this video, but we will in future videos. Now, I've previously created a template here just to save us some time. So I'm going to go into the template manager and select the location template and click insert. And now I'm just going to click save, and we've got some content on the page. But over here on this right hand side, the page is kind of bare, and so I want to add some content to the page. And what I need to do is add another module to the page. Now to add a module, I simply need to hover over the modules menu and click add new module. Now if you're not familiar with DNN terminology, I like to describe a module being to DNN what an app is to an iPhone. It's just a way to inject more functionality into the page. And so after I click the add new module, menu item you see that we got a drop down menu and we can see all of the modules in the system and we currently have quite a few now we can filter these by category so if I click this drop down I can filter these by admin common enterprise professional social or all now some of these were in the system by default and as an admin user you can also create categories for your modules so I'm going to filter these by common I'm just going to grab this HTML Pro module that's in the common category and start dragging it down the page. And as I drag, you see these blue regions that come into view here. These are the panes, which are landing zones or regions where we can place the modules on the page. So I'm just going to let go of my mouse and the page refreshes here. And now we've easily added another module to the page. I'm going to update the title here again of this module by hovering over that module action menu and clicking settings and I'm simply going to update the name of this to contact us. I'm not going to configure any permissions and I'm going to click update and here again I'm going to edit some content and I'm going to load up another template that I've previously created. Now as I'm editing content you'll see the there's a, a blue box right here that's that's flashing that is the auto save feature in action so to auto save feature, 
uh, gives you a lot of peace of mind because if your browser crashes we're actually storing the content in an offline location so you're never going to lose any of your edits. So within a couple of minutes we've been able to create a new page as well as get some content on here and the page is looking pretty decent. Now I also want to show you how you can move the page around as well as if you needed to create multiple pages at the same time. And to do that I'm going to hover over admin and we're going to go to page management. Page management is another way that we can create pages and actually move the pages around. So we just created this locations page and on the left hand side we see a tree like structure here of the, the site navigation or pages within our site. So let's say that we wanted the locations page to live right here after the hour services page. So we can grab the locations page and just start dragging it and as we drag it you see that we have some lines that start to come into view. And so I want the page to live right in front of this community page. So I'm going to let go and now you can see that the page has been moved here and we've got a, a message saying that the page has been moved and if we refresh the page we can see that our page indeed now has been moved in between the contact us and community pages. Now let's say that we wanted to create a bunch of sub pages of locations. This is also very easy to do. We can hover over locations page, right click and just select add pages. So all we need to do now is type the page names that we want to type. So I can name this subpage 1, subpage 2. And if we had any child pages, I just need to start with this greater than symbol here as indicated in this message. And we can call this sub subpage. And then if we, we, we could create as many pages as we would like here. So we click create pages. And now the system has created the pages for us. And so I'll refresh the page again. And now when I hover over the locations, you can see that we have these sub pages that are now visible here. And so it's very easy if you want to create multiple pages or even the whole structure of a site. Now the last thing I want to show you how to do is how to update the site logo. But before we talk about how to update the site logo, it's important to understand what the site logo is. In our site design, our site logo is here at the top left hand corner of the page. And if we click the logo, it'll take us back to the home page. Now your logo can be anywhere within your site's design and that's up to the designer. As we click around the site, you'll notice that the site logo remains in the top left hand corner and as I indicated, if we click it, we'll be taken back to the home page. Now in order to update the logo, we simply need to hover over the admin menu option and then select site settings. Once we get back in the site settings area, you see that we have four different tabs here that we can access. Just want to ensure that you're on the basic settings tab and beneath the tabs we have some panels. So I'm going to minimize the site details and expand the appearance panel. And the first item in the appearance panel is the logo. So we could easily click and upload a file and so we could upload either of these files. And we can also drag and drop. So I can easily take this new logo and drag it and drop it here. And what that did was that uploaded the logo for me and now I've actually seen the new logo in the preview. The next thing I need to do is just scroll down and click update. And now our site logo has been updated for us. And that's how easy it is to update the site logo. So I hope this video has been helpful. I'll just remind you to be sure to check out our future videos where we'll discuss more in-depth functionality of Evoke content.